Here's exactly how you get the listing agreement signed at the presentation the first time. This is the second video in my deep dive on how to take one to four new listings every single month. In the first video, I taught you exactly the framework you need to understand on how to set a solid listing appointment. And after that listing appointment is set, um, now in this video, we are talking about how to get the agreement signed at the appointment the first time. Before I understood this, I remember when I was newer, I was really struggling with getting the agreement signed. I knew how to set listing appointments, but I would set 10 listing appointments, go on 10 appointments, and then take zero listings. And I was so frustrated, I was so irritated, I, it was so confusing, and I didn't have any resources that taught me this. There's nothing on YouTube like this. This is a video kind of for my old self and for you if you're having the same issues. You first need to establish massive social proof and trust before you get there. So a lot of the trust is built connecting to them during the call. I have a system set up where they receive three automated emails, three automated texts that remind them, hey, your appointment is at 4 p.m. Uh, the 23rd on uh, Tuesday at 4 p.m. They have three emails and three texts that remind them, hey, it's in, your appointment's in two hours. Hey, your appointment's in one hour. This builds a social proof and trust where they're like, oh, this guy has, this guy is like legit. He has systems in place to make sure, like this guy's running a business. Not only do they get three emails and three texts that remind them of the appointment um, so that this decreases the flake rate of them, the, the rate of them canceling, but also, I send them over an email. Uh, it's a quick little, basically a little picture book email with not many words. It's pictures of me, my professional headshot, the kind of work that I do. I send them a picture of Mango and a picture of what I do for fun. And it's a little, it's one email. It's a very short email, but it shows them, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is Mango, my bird. And it puts a face to the name it gives them a little bit of social proof. You can also put your Zill, a link to your Zillow review um, in the email as well. You need, you just need to show them, hey, I, you just got off the phone with me. I'm a real person. Here's my work. Not only that, um, they're getting a, a market update uh, a few days later. I'm basically sending them a bunch of information on myself and, and solidifying, hey, I'm a real person. This is what I'm like. And here's some automations that show you, hey, don't forget, you're meeting with me at 4 p.m. in two hours. Don't forget, you're meeting with me in 30 minutes. Okay, so you've established trust and credibility and whatever. Now you're at the meeting. Obviously, you look really nice, you're presentable. And throughout this entire next hour, two hours, you're going to be leading them. You're in a position of authority. You are the leader that they are looking to for guidance. And you need to understand that. Get to know them, chat a little bit, look through the house. Um, this part isn't so important, um, but if you do look through the house, you want to talk about the house in a way that implies knowledge. So I remember I was at a $1.7 million listing appointment with one of my new agents, um, and this house was in a lower end neighborhood. And so for a house to be this price, the house was really nice. And the house had really nice, expensive trim all around the house. I've never seen trim that expensive. Like what I mean by that is like really built up crown molding and it's, it's everywhere. There, there was panel molding everywhere. There was beautiful base, base trim everywhere. And I was talking to my new agent being like, hey Bruce, look, I want you to notice all this trim. This is extremely expensive to do. Um, if you notice, not a lot of homes have crown molding to begin with. That crown molding is like two feet long. This is very expensive. And I was doing this on purpose. I, I was giving Bruce a, a teaching, a lesson, but I was also purposefully saying this to show the seller, oh, Aaron understands my home. Aaron understands that there's a lot of effort and care and money went into upgrading my home. So that's what I mean by if you are touring the home, say things like, oh wow, th th this is really nice vinyl flooring. This is a luxury plank. 
or like, oh wow, you really don't see much soapstone countertops. Um, how much was this slab? Or like say things like that. Wow, this is appliance set is like a four thousand dollar. That's a four thousand dollar stove. How did you get that? Say conversationally. Say things that imply your knowledge. So once you've sat down at the kitchen table, this is exactly where the presentation can go two ways. One is the actual presentation where you show them your uh, your pack listing packet of here's my business, here's the plan, here's the marketing plan, here's my past work, um, here is uh, whatever. This is the listing presentation. Or instead of going that route, you also need you also need at certain point to dive into their motivation and problem at a deeper level than you did over the phone. So you know on the phone that this guy, Bob, wanted to move to Texas to be with his family. But you need to understand why, what made that decision happen, what changed in their life to where they need to go be with their family. You need to understand how it's affecting their life to not be with their family. You need to understand how it's affecting him most emotionally to not be with his family. You need to really understand why did this happen? Why is this happening? Why does it need to happen? Why isn't it happening? You need to understand what, what's happening because it's not happening. You need to understand the motivation at, a, at such a core level. Because if you could do that, well, here's what it could sound like. Well, I, I need to move because uh, my, my sister my sister's husband left her with two kids and she can't take care of the kids by herself. Oh wow, that's, that's really unfortunate, Bob. Um, why do you need to go over there? I mean, obviously you wanted to help your family, but why do you need to go over to your family right now? Well, because she's now just a single mom and her kids are at an age where they need support and our parents aren't in a place to be taking care of them, so I need to go there oh wow, you're a really good brother for doing that to be able to leave what you've got going on here to be in a completely different state for your sister. Um, what, what are you gonna be doing over there for her? Well, I need to be doing this and this with her kids. Oh wow, okay, great great uncle stepping in. Why do you have to do this now though? Well, uh, the sister lost, my sister lost her job. I'm making this up. My sister lost her job and um, she's kind of in a tight spot and I need to be there like, I needed to be there like a month ago. Oh, what happens if you, what's happening now that you're not there? Well, she's really stressed out and like she's not doing well mentally. Oh wow, that's terrible. What happens if you keep delaying this? Well, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't want to, we can't get to that point. I need, I need to be there now. Like, okay, sounds like this is pretty urgent, Bob. H how has this been affecting you? Well, I'm stressed. I'm, I'm on the phone every night with my sister trying to calm her down and telling her I'll be there soon. And, and like, this is, this is putting a lot of like stress on me. Oh, wow. Sounds like this is a little stressful for you. Like, how has that been affecting you? Well, I can't even focus on my work. I can't even blah, 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 blah. It's hard for me to sleep. All right, so now I've, I've, I've boiled this down so at, at such a core level where this I'm understanding, wow, this guy's losing sleep and can't focus at his job and is stressed because her sister's stressed and she lost her. Like there's so many layers to this. On the phone call, it was just, I need to be in Texas for my sister. And that's, the, that's, all, that's all the information you needed. But at the presentation is where you dig really deep because that emotional turmoil that he's going through is leverage we use at the end during the closing objection time. You know, um, for example, let me skip way to the end. Yeah, I got to think about it. You know, if, if I'm like, uh, okay, now you sign here, Bob. Well, I got to think about it. Um, and let's just say we're handling this objection a while like, ah, uh, yeah, I just got to, I don't know, this, I just got to think about it. Well, Bob, I know how important it is for you to move close to your sister. Um, and it, you said that it was kind of keeping you stressed. What exactly is stopping you from working with me today? And I'm leveraging his motivation of like, this is also problem of this is really messing with me mentally. Anyway, let's go back to uh, where we were at, which is, either the listing presentation or we want to dive into his motivation and problem. So that's how you find his motivation at an emotional level. With the problem, 
you need to understand like, all right, what happened last time? Like what did your agent give you any feedback on why this house didn't sell? Whatever he says to you, you just need to help him resolve and make sure you, he understands that. Honestly, for an expired, the problem usually is not getting the money they wanted. That's usually the problem. And this is going to be taken care of during the comparable market analysis section where you're guiding him through the price, pricing the home and you're, you're coaching him on understanding why he was overpriced and why he needs to lower the price if that was the issue in the, in the, previous, in the previous part or in the previous time he tried to sell his home. But understanding his motivation, I would say, is, is uh, more important. So let's, let's just say uh, going the route of motivation and problem, we figured that out already. And once we figured that out, all right, well, Bob, uh, let's go to the presentation route. So at my listing presentation, um, this is what it looks like. You just need to have some kind of physical thing. It doesn't have to be so nice. Sometimes I don't even bring one of these. I just pull up Canva on my computer and just walk them through that. Or I've been transitioning a lot to Zoom appointments. I don't even go to the seller's home anymore. Um, and I just sh share my screen on Canva. So this is my listing presentation that I have as of now. And it kind of sounds like this. So Bob, I understand how important it is for you to uh, move to Texas to be with your sister. I want to go over exactly how we can get you the result that you're looking for. And by the end of this, why they're going to decide uh, whether it's a good idea for us to work together or not. And regardless, either choice is fine. Uh, my, my goal here is to make sure that we get you the best price for your home so that you can get to where you need to go. And throughout this appointment, I am dropping several times uh, statements that say, hey, my, my whole goal here is to work for you and get you the highest price possible. And I'm dropping in these statements that get them to get them to trust me or, or show that I'm on your side. Like my job here is to get you top dollar for this home. Like my job here is to make sure that this is so smooth and to the point where you recommend me to all your friends. Well, I'm, I'm saying these things to say, I'm on your side. I'm going to give you the best results. Um, you, can tr you can trust me. I'm here to get you the best results. So I say, oh, these are my testimonials. You can look at this uh, when we're done. I'm going to leave this with you. Bob, this is some of my past work. Uh, me and my team have sold homes such as these. And Bob, real quick, do you know how, do you know how many people find their home online? Like, uh, like most of them probably. Yeah, Bob, like 95%, like almost 99% of people find their home that they purchase online. If that's the case, we need to make sure that your house stands out from all the other listings that are on the market at the same time as you. And so, Bob, we need to make your home. I'm trying to see the screen behind the phone. I'm, we need to we need to make we need to show your home in a way where it looks so beautiful that everyone's clicking on your home. This is the this is the kind of quality of work that you can expect from me, Bob. All right, so this is kind of where we tee up uh, the premise of what the average agent does. So, Bob, um, really quickly, let's touch on marketing styles. Um, this is the traditional marketing. This is kind of exactly, this is probably exactly what your previous agent did, okay? So number one, a real estate agent will list your home on the MLS, which syndicates to Redfin, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, and so forth. And that's going to be where buyers are looking for your home. Number two is the yard sign. Um, we'll stick a, a sign in the yard that shows that the house is for sale. We'll do open houses so buyers have free, free, uh, the ability to freely come into the house on the weekends. We want to make sure as many people are seeing this home as possible. And number four, we need to represent your home in such a way that a buyer's first impression on your home is something that they fall in love with. We need to make sure people are visually falling in love with your home. Bob, this is kind of what every agent provides. Is there anything else that your previous agent provided that's not on this list? You can explain this however way you want, but you just need to get, uh, you just need to explain to him, hey, this is what a basic agent provides for a seller. Is there anything else your previous agent provided for you that's not on this list? And they'll say, no, 
That's pretty much it. If they say, yeah, yeah, my agent, other, I think my agent did a few things. Okay, Bob, what exactly did they provide you? And you have to try to get them to like list out what they did. Usually it's like, oh, well, um, uh, we would like Facebook posts. Okay, well, that's pretty much kind of this. Is there anything else? The, the, the syndication thing. Is there anything else that your agent did for you? No. You're trying to get him to say, no, there's nothing else my agent did other than this. You're trying to lock in that, no, my previous agent didn't do anything else. Once they, once they give you that no, you say, yeah, Bob, and, and here's exactly why you're gonna be hiring me. Um, because I'm gonna help you create a bidding war. So how to start a bidding war is you need massive attention plus an attractive price. Okay, proper pi pricing. Bob, do you know the three ways to price a home? No? Bob, there's three ways to price a home. You can overprice it, you can, mar you can put it at fair market, or you can put it below market price. Bob, when you overprice a home, your home will just kind of sit there on the market and we're just waiting, hopefully for an offer. But usually either the offer never comes or it's very lowballed. And it's kind of what you experienced last time, right? Notice how I said, right? It's, it's kind of what you experienced last time, right? I want him to say yes to that. Yeah, Bob, when was the last time you shopped for anything overpriced? Never. Yeah, exactly. People are not ever shopping for anything overpriced. It just goes against our logic to do so. And buyers are smarter than that, right? Yeah. And notice I'm, I'm forcing him to that yes. I'm, I'm, I'm forcing him into a yes every now and then when I want to solidify or lock in a point with him in, in, into his head. Yeah, Bob, or you can price a home at fair market value. And usually, you know, in this Mill Creek area, uh, average days on market is seven to 14 days. So between that time range, you can expect a fair, like you can, if, you're, if your house is priced fairly, you'll probably get that price within that seven to 14 days. But Bob, have you ever seen a home that was priced below market value? Yeah, there's usually a bidding war. Exactly, there's a bidding war. Bob, when a, pri when a house is priced below what it's worth and it's marketed beautifully and to everyone, everyone that's looking for a house like this can see it, then all the buyers are going, oh honey, let's, let's take a look at this home this weekend. There's an open house. Let's go take a look. We want a super busy weekend of showings. And when Monday or Tuesday comes around, we're gonna hold off on accepting any offers until our offer review date of, let's say, Tuesday at noon. And on Tuesday at noon, we should be receiving multiple offers. Bob, do you know what happens when you get more than one offer? No. Well, as soon as the second offer comes in, that creates a bidding war where, where each party has to now outbid each other on price and terms to get your home. And that's exactly where we want to be to get you your best price and best terms. Does that make sense, Bob? Yeah, that makes sense. Great. The next thing we're going to be doing, Bob, is a one mile radius blast. This is where we cold call every single neighbor of yours to number one, ask them if they have a friend or a family that wants to be their new neighbor, or number two, op invite them to the open house. Our goal is to get as many eyeballs on the property as possible. Number three, we run paid Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, this forces everyone in the area to look at your home, whether they want to or not. Number four and five, I, so I, I deep dive into the networking groups I'm a part of and how eXp is an international database. Um, because eXp is worldwide, this isn't gonna apply to all the agents, but um, it's a really powerful selling point when I say that eXp is worldwide. We're in several different countries. And Bob, you want to make sure that the people looking at your home, um, wh whether they're out of state, out of town, out of state, out of country, they want to be able to see your home. Why? This could be the fucking course. And then maybe, how are you getting more value on YouTube than... All right, my, my advisor is telling me not to go uh, finish this <laughs> finish this listing presentation. I didn't realize I was going deep. Which is 
This is deep. What do you mean? You're doing the entire presentation. Man. All right, I, I, I'm being told I'm giving you too much sauce. I hope you're loving this content. Real quick, I want to mention I'm running a brand new eight week coaching program that's designed to take new agents that have never taken a listing before into taking one to four new listings every single month. If you want to work directly with me on how to take more listings in your business, click the link in the description below to learn more. By the end of this explaining this page, you're, you're, you're basically telling the guy, Bob, can you see how this marketing plan combined with the traditional marketing that a typical real estate agent does, can you see how this is designed to give you top dollar for your home? He needs to answer yes to that. He needs to answer yes to that. And then you lock that in with a, exactly. At key points of this presentation, you need to have him like, hey, can you see how this works? Hey, can you see how no one's gonna look at an overpriced home? Can you see how this bidding war works? Can you see how this is this entire marketing plan is designed to get you top dollar for this home? I'm having him agree to how everything makes sense and how good this is the entire time. After you show him the marketing plan, next you show him the price of the property. Um, this is where I pull up the MLS right in front of him, set up the search to where an appraise, how an appraiser would look at the properties and walk him through all the comparables. And I have him, I have Bob, Compare side by side. Has your property compared to that one? Has your property compared to that one? What price did this one sell at? Why did it sell at that price? Is it worth more or less than your property? And I do that for all the properties that are nearby. At the end, I'm like, so Bob, based on what we're seeing here, what do you think would be a sale, sale, a fair sale price for your home? Well, I guess it's about 900. Right. Yeah, it is about it is about nine hundred, and you don't want to you don't want to lock in a number at, at ever. You want to kind of give him a range. Like, yeah, you can definitely expect about eight seventy to nine hundred for your home, and if that's the case, Bob, I recommend put, listing your home for about eight fifty, eight sixty, to get that eight, the high eight hundreds or low nine hundreds that you're looking for. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, great. Okay, now we now we locked in a price. Now we locked in a price. So now at this point, let me let's let's take a step back. You know his you know his emotional reasoning for selling his home. You know what happened, what wrong, what, what went wrong the last time. He understands what you're capable of, your social proof, your past work. Um, he understands your marketing plan and why your your plan is designed to get him top dollar. You've already you've now locked in a price. Everything needs to make sense for him. Everything needs to make sense for him. There can't be any questions that he has in this. He can't have any questions here. Before you move on to each, each part, you're like, Bob, do you have any questions about why we price this home this way? Bob, do you have any other questions on this marketing plan? Bob, do you have any questions about my past work? You need to be asking him these things like before you move on. There can't be any questions here. Once you locked in the price, he needs to know how much he's going to walk away with at the end of the sale. So on my MLS, there is a uh, net pro a seller net proceeds calculator. I put it all in, show him exactly how well the estimate on what is go he is going to be left with at the end of everything. I show him that number and I say, Bob, is that a number you could live with? I learned that from Greg Cardone. Bob, is that a number you could live with? He and he'll be like. It's less than what I thought it would be. And that's okay. That's not, a, that's not an objection. You say, yeah, Bob, I, I understand it's less than what you thought it would be. Um, but is that a number you could live with? You just double down and don't say anything. And, he, and he'll be like, yeah. Okay, great. After he's locked in that net proceeds, now you move on to, um, now you start doing compliance tests and future pacing you working together. All right, Bob. So when do you think that you could get this property ready on the, uh, to be on the market? Well, uh, we could get everything ready in about two weeks. Okay, Bob, so we wanna typically list on a Thursday, give every buyer the opportunity to look at the home throughout the weekend so that, so that our offer review date is on a Monday or a Tuesday. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, great. So we just need a two day advance for a photographer to come in. So if we're gonna list on a Thursday, we need the photographer to at the latest come in to take pictures on Tuesday. If we're gonna list on Thursday, we need Tuesday for the photographer to come in. Um, does that work for you? Yeah. 
okay, so when I, if, when I asked, does that work for you? And he says, yeah, he just passed my compliance test of, he's basically admit, saying to me, yeah, your photographer can come in on Tuesday. Yeah, we can list on a Thursday and have an off review date of Tuesday. Okay, great. And uh, before that, we'll need some professional cleaners. Um, I, I take care of that. I'll, I'll handle that. Uh, we can have them come in the day, the day before on Monday. Does that work for you? Yeah, that works for me. Okay, great, Bob. Um, now next is the paperwork. Bob, this is the paperwork. Uh, this is the same exact form that you filled out with your previous agent. Uh, this is walk through as like not in depth on the paperwork, but like here's the commission, here's the list date. We'll leave it blank for now, um, but it's tentatively set for March the 27th. Um, I just need your initials right here. And you just you just sit there and and wait for him to take it. Well, first of all, instinctively he's just going to take it because I I'm 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 handing him a I'm handing him something. He's instinct he's instinctively going to take it and he'll either sign or start saying I got to think about this. Okay, this is something that most people don't understand. This I got to think about it just started the second half of the presentation. Most agents will take that as the end of the presentation. Oh, all right, yeah, I gotta, I, I understand you gotta think about it. Well, um, I'll call you back in a, a few days and we'll see where to go from here. And then they'll head out. No, 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 no. You're not a loser. You stay there and you're like, okay, this is, now it's the second part of the presentation. And you have to be mentally prepared for that objection of, I gotta think about this. And now you go, okay, now, now I'm here. I'm locked in for another hour. Bob, I understand that this is a big decision for you. What exactly do you need to think about? Well, I got to And whatever he throws at you, it, and there's like six, really like, there's only a handful of objections that he could give you. It's commission, I need more money. Mm, I, I, the price, I don't like the price. Um, I have a friend. There's a few objections here and it, they all kind of work the same way. If you understand a certain like framework of handling objections, you can kind of handle every single objection. But your goal is to remove the objection in a way that kind of makes you the best choice. And when after you do that for an hour, oh, it doesn't always take an hour, it could take like two minutes. But you have to be willing and prepared to do this for an hour. Um, I, I've sat there for an hour once, just handling objection, trying to make this make financial sense for them. Because they, they have, well, I want to interview more agents. I have an agent that's willing to do this for 1%. Bob, if your agent can't even, can't even negotiate for his own commission, how do you think he's going to negotiate on the sale of your home? Well, I don't know. Yeah, Bob, when you're under contract with a buyer, how do you think your agent's going to negotiate on your behalf on a new roof and a new hot water tank when your, when your agent can't even negotiate for his own paycheck? Yeah, exactly, Bob. By trying to save 1%, 2% on a commission, you might be losing $20,000. And I know your whole goal here is to net the most amount of money, right? Yeah, right. So, Bob, can you see how working with me is going to lead you into making top dollar for your home? Yeah. Right. So, Bob, what else would be stopping you from working with me today? Uh, I, I just want to interview other agents. Bob, what exactly do you, are you looking for in your next agent? Well, the sale history. I just want an agent that um, has been doing this for a long time, that has previous sales in this neighborhood. Bob, it sounds like you're just looking for an agent that's confident and competent to sell your home for the top dollar, right? Yeah, that is. Right. Bob, can you see how my marketing plan is designed to get your top dollar for your home? Yeah. And Bob, can you see by my past results and my past work, um, I'm very well experienced to get this job done? Yeah. Bob, it sounds like I'm exactly what you're looking for, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So what else will be stopping you from working with me today? Notice how I, I keep saying, what else will be stopping you from working with me today? Objection. Handle that objection. What else will be stopping you from working with me today? Objection. Handle that objection. What else would be stopping you from working with me today? Well, nothing really. Okay, great. I just need to sign right here. And then he signs. So that's how you uh, walk out with the agreement signed. I know this was a lot. 
there's actually a lot that I left out. And in fact, I'm create, I've created an eight week coaching program that teaches you how to take one to four new listings every month. This eight week coaching program is designed to take a new agent who has no consistency in taking listings into being able to take consistent listings by knowing exactly what to say, knowing exactly how to say it, setting reliable, consistent listing appointments, and being able to walk out of the listing appointment with the agreement signed. You're gonna be working with me directly every single week. I'm gonna be calling your leads for you and setting listing appointments for you so you can see how it's done. You're gonna have access to my entire course catalog that breaks down each tiny little detail thoroughly in depth on my in, in the course. You're gonna have access to the community of other agents where they're all gonna be submitting their testimonies, their case studies, their their success stories. You're gonna be able to read how they took their listings. You can ask me any question at any time. You're gonna be working with me directly for eight weeks, but everything else you have lifetime access to. If you wanna know more about this eight week coaching program, go to the link in the description for more information. I know this was a super long video. I wanna know exactly who made it to this point because I'm always interested in knowing who made it to the end. In the comments down below, I want you to say, I got the listing agreement signed. And if you say that, I'll know exactly who you are and I'll know that you're my favorite person in the world. Thanks for watching to this point. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. And sign up for the coaching program.